QuickBooks Online 2024. Invoice created from check, created from a purchase order form, otherwise known as a PO form. Get ready and some coffee because the accounting team is on hand with QuickBooks Online 2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six pack shirts, a must have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six pack like shape which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file. We set up in a prior presentation, opening up the major financial statement reports like we do every time the reports located on the left hand side within the favorites we're going to right click on the balance sheet to open the link in a new tab right click the p l the profit loss the income statement open link in new tab trial balance same thing if that trial balance is, is not in your favorites you could search for it we're going to tab to the right where the balance sheet is located close up the hamburger and then we'll change that range for the first month of 2024 oh, tab Oh, 013124 tab running to refresh it tabbing to the right the hamburger we're going to close that thing again how could you eat the hamburger if it's not closed oh, 010124 to 013124 and run it to refresh it tabbing to the right closing the hamburger some people open the hamburger to eat it because they're on like no bread diet i guess if you're just going to try to eat the meat you need to open the hamburger to eat it but in any case 010124 tab 013124 and we're going to be running it to refresh it the carnivore diet it's really popular apparently these days i don't know about where you're at but i see like that thing's all over the place any case let's go to the balance sheet tab this time we're going to be entering another invoice we've done that before we've seen the invoice form that's the sales type form that's going to be increasing the accounts receivable that we then need to track and collect the receivable at some future point in time. But this time it's a little bit different, a little bit of a twist, a different story happening because we're gonna imagine that we knew from the start who we wanted to sell the inventory to even before we bought the inventory and therefore even on the purchase forms such as the purchase order, the bill, or in our case, the check form, we included the customer, not just simply the vendor so we can track who we are purchasing the inventory for we even made it a billable item so we can easily create the invoice although we note that quickbooks online system is not actually perfect using that billable item in this way the desktop version actually uh, does it better so we pointed that out when we paid for the inventory last time we'll point it out again uh, this time let's do a quick recap of the flow chart going on over here this is a desktop flow chart but it's just looking at the flow of the forms that's why we're going to use it for the online version here we're just looking at the process remembering that with inventory we have both the purchasing side of the of the equation as well as inventory being involved in the sales cycle so we're imagining this time the story being that someone comes into the shop and says, hey, I would like a particular type of guitar. I want it to be plaid colored or something like that. We're like, we don't have that. It needs to be pink plaid with some crazy colors. And it's like, well, that sounds ugly. We don't want that in the shop really. But if you want to buy that, 
yourself, then we'll order that custom for you. And, th and so we, we then are going to go to our vendor and order directly for the customer. So that means when we purchase it using the purchase order, which is a form that doesn't actually record anything uh, in terms of the financial statements, but is an internal document that goes to our vendor for the request of the guitars, the inventory in our case, then we actually put the customer on the form. The vendor doesn't care about the customer. We put the customer on the form for our purposes so that when I create the bill or check from the purchase order, it will show me the customer reminding me that I bought that piece of inventory for that particular customer. So then when we get the inventory with the bill, then we can enter it as a bill in our system, increase in accounts payable, or just simply pay it off as we did this time with a check or expense form. And we would see the customer on it and know that we might want to turn around or should turn around and sell that gaudy, ugly, plaid, funny colored pink guitar to whoever wanted to buy it. <laughs> to buy it. I don't know. It's just not my, it wasn't my thing. It wasn't my color. Okay. I'm not trying to be like rude or anything, but in any case, so, uh, and we, we could try to do that with the billable items. So we made it billable, but it's not a perfect link to make it billable. And so we'll show that shortly, but then we're going to turn around and create the invoice, of course, which will be on the sales side of things, which is where the inventory will basically go back down when we make the sale. That's where we're at, at this point in time. So let's, let's go back on over here and recap it this way. Let's go back to uh, the first tab and and let's remember let's go into the sales items over here and close up the ham boogie we're going to go into the customers and then we're going to go into uh eric music and let's recap what we did here and you can see down here we have the billable expense charge that's currently in here and that means that we basically charged something on a bill and made it billable so that'll give us an indication that we should be making an invoice that again that part of the system works great you may also be able to find that if we go to the sales items here and we select uh the drop down and we look for the unbilled income so that once again gives us these items and that'll give us an indication of what has happening what has happened and that's great so, so now let's go on to the purchase side of things. And we're going to say, okay, if, for example, if I went into this billable item, it would give me the information for it, billable expense charged. I'm going to close this out. If I go into Eric music here and edit it, then it takes me to uh, the billable expense gives us the information. The description is an Epiphone semi hollow body. So I can see then that's the vendor that we dealt with so let's go on to the expense side of things let's open this up and go to the vendors which is in the expense area and then i can go to the vendors and i'm going to clear the filter so i can see all the vendors go into epiphone here and within epiphone we had these couple purchase orders so let's open up some of these purchase orders let's open up this one and so there's our purchase order and then Here's the two for that we assigned to Eric Music. So remember the purchase order is going to the vendor, Epiphone. That's who we buy the guitars from. Uh, they don't care about our customers, but we noted that we wanted to buy these guitars in particular. We bought a bunch of them. This is kind of a you know weird example. We bought 50 and 10 of the Epiphone Les Pauls. All of them were that plaid, ugly plaid, pink color or something. And then the Epiphone semi hollow body. So we bought all of these guitars specifically for uh, Eric music. And then when we receive the box of guitars, this is the purchase order requesting guitars doesn't actually record anything, but then we've, we've got the bill. So here's the bill, uh, related to it. And, uh, we entered the bill. Hold on a second. We didn't enter a bill. We paid it off with a check, the check form. We paid it off with a check. So I'm getting a little confused. Sorry about that. So here's the Epiphone paid it off with simply a check. We got the bill with the box of guitars, paid it off with a check. We paid off both of the purchase orders with it. So, and then we made them billable. Now here's the questionable step. Note that if this pulled into the check form, I would still see that Eric Music was the customer and I don't have to make it billable because I could just turn around and say, now I'm simply gonna create an invoice 
uh, for Eric Music because I can see that in this field. That might be the best way to go, but I just want to note that you could make it billable. So there's a problem with that, however, in that when when this pulls into the invoice, we'll see that it pulls in at cost. So let me just show you why that would be like how this works in QuickBooks. Note that if you had if you had a category up here and you had a job cost system and you put in up top that you wanted something to to go for your gas or auto expense and then you wanted to turn around and charge the customer for that because you're going to make an invoice based on the costs that you incurred and then possibly have a markup then it would make sense for the customer side over here to add the customer and make it billable it would then pull into the invoice at cost now the problem with that is from quickbooks standpoint is there's no item see there's no item that's being made usually when i pull something into the invoice it's it, there's an item the item is the thing that tells it which account it should go to what's the price of it typically and uh what's the income account here i can pull in the amount but it doesn't really tell me the account that it should go to right that's the, so so that's why it goes to a generic billable income account basically is the general idea so when you have an item down here if we sell inventory there's two costs to it there's the sales cost or the sales price and then there is the cost so it would be great if quickbooks would would be able to identify this as a item and then when i pull it into the invoice it doesn't treat it as like a billable gasoline expense and just record it as cost but rather it records the sales price here so that it's funny that it doesn't do that now i think it does actually record it to the proper income account driven by the item but for some reason they don't have it so it pulls in the sales price it pulls in the cost so that's kind of the issue so there's a workaround for that but i just we just want to point that out let's close this out and just a recap on how to turn on that billable item if you go into the cog up top and you go into the account and settings then under the expenses we have the bill and expenses here so we have the uh make expenses and items billable we have that checked off markup uh, with default rate so in other words if you had like gas that you wanted to pull into the invoice and you want to mark it up 30 percent because you have a 30 percent markup you can put the percent markup i think it's better like not to do that typically and then simply put on the invoice your total markup in another line item because i think that's more transparent and easy to see but if you want each line marked up then you can do that and then track billable expenses and items in income so in a single account in other words if there wasn't any item that tells quickbooks what sales account it should go to then quickbooks is just going to dump it into one income account so you won't be able to say should it go into service income or should it go into the product to the to the product income or any other accounts that you want that are income because there's no item to tell it that that's why you you end up with this just give it to a to one income account now if you didn't check this out it would actually decrease the expense like auto expense would go down we'll talk about that possibly more later you don't typically want that uh, to be the case so you typically want that checked off okay let's close that out and so so now so so now if i uh create an invoice for uh what was it for who did we have this for again i'm getting confused we're creating an invoice for Eric Music. I knew that. So let's go ahead and hit the plus button and say we want to make an invoice. And I'm going to type in here Eric uh, Eric Music. Eric. Boom. And so there we have it. And so now we have the billable items. So billable charges. So we can pull those in. I'm going to add it there's the 20 there's the three uh 3002 let's close this back out and x this back out and so there it is so now we've got this there's the bill there's the uh the 1005 okay we'll make the date uh the date will be as of the 23rd let's say and so 30 days later we're going to add 30 days later i'm going to close this out why is it doing that i didn't want you to open that up again i already added those so then so there's that so that looks good and then tags okay and then it pulled in 
uh, the products and services. So here's the ELP that was pulled in. Here's the problem. It pulled it in at the cost. See, so it's linked. You can see it's linked over here. That's great. Pulled it in as taxable. That's great. I think it's still going to go to the income account driven by the item as opposed to billable income if I recorded it, but it doesn't have the right price on it. So I can then say, well, let me tab through here and add another line just to see what the real cost is. ELP, I'm going to say an ELP should be there for a rate of $500. See, so, so what you could do is just change it. I'm just going to type in here and then change this to 500. And, and now it's still got the link and everything pulls in properly. And then here's the EPSH. And then that should be 400 instead of 320. So I'll change that to 400. And now the link is still there. Everything looks good there. And I'm going to close this back out. So that's a workaround uh, that you can do. I'm going to trash this one. Okay, so now so so that's the that's the workaround that you could do, but it's not like a perfect uh, a perfect workaround, right? So it's kind of a it's kind of a little ugly. So I'll just say be careful to use that billable item when you're selling inventory. You make sure you 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 know what you're doing with that. So I'm going to edit the tax to try to put it back to the generic five, hitting the drop down, generic five percent on the sales tax, close it up. And so now we have the same process that the same invoice uh, that we have seen in the past, which is a fairly complex form. So let's review what's this going to do again. Well, it's an invoice. Invoice means accounts receivable is going to go up. It's going to go up by the 30,450. That includes the sales tax. The other side is going to increase the income of 29,000, not including the sales tax. The sales tax is going to go up. That's a payable account liability. 1,450 and inventory is going to go down by the amounts that were here before we changed them, the 400 and the three, whatever times what times the 15 to 10. Uh, but, but now it's not on the invoice, but it's known by the system because of the items and, uh, the cost of goods sold will also be impacted. That's the expense for us selling the inventory, the net impact on net income, 29,000 sales price minus the cost of goods sold and the accounts receivable will have an impact to the sub ledger broken out by customer, which will be Eric Music tracking that and the inventory will have a sub ledger broken out by units decreasing the units of inventory in a perpetual inventory system. Hitting the drop down, let's uh, save it and let's hit the save and close over here. Save and close. Let's go to the balance sheet and check out that transaction. Running the report. We're going into the AR, going into the AR. Hold on to your hats. There it is, uh, the, the 30,400 for the full amount back. Let's go to the income statement. The other side running it is in the product and service income. Going into that, we can see it here to do, and it went in invoice two line items 25 and four uh, that doesn't include the sales tax sales tax back on the balance sheet liability it's under these two or one of these three these two tax lines for the sales tax and then inventory went down going into inventory went down by these items i think there's multiple of them because it's dealing with uh, the first in first out inventory method. But in any case, these amounts are not on the actual invoice. Those are the cost now going back. And then on the income statement, we also have the cost of goods sold. That is the cost of the inventory, the expense related to the inventory, these items. And then if I go back, the net impact on net income is the sales price minus the cost of goods sold. If we go back to the balance sheet, the accounts receivable has a sub ledger breaking it out by customer. Let's check that out. Let's go to the tab to the right, right click on it, duplicate it. And then we will open up the reports on the left to look at the sub ledger, closing the hand boogie. And we're going to scroll down and we've got who owes you. So we've got the customer balance. Let's do the detail, customer balance detail. So now we've got Anderson. There's the Eric Music. There's the 30,004, the total of the AR, 3867150. Going back to the balance sheet, 3867150. We also have a sub ledger for the accounts receivable. 
15,678. Let's check that out. Tab into the right, right click, duplicate the tab. And then we're going to go in to the reports on the left hand side. Let's just type in inventory valuation summary, closing the boogie, changing the range in 01. 31, 2, 4, run it. This is the quantities we currently have on hand. It's at cost of 15,678, which should tie out to the balance sheet, 15,678. If we go to the internal documentation, opening this up, uh, and we go to the sales side of things now, we can close up the ham boogie and we're in the all sales items. We were looking up those billable items before, which are now, uh, we consumed that one billable item. So the billable item has been removed now. So, so, it's, so this is the only one we have left. And then, if I, and then if I search it by invoice, I could search this by invoice. And so there we have that uh, searching by invoice, all let's say, so here's all of our invoices. We might search by the open invoices. There's our open invoices. We can search the invoices over here as well, where we might be looking at simply the unpaid invoices. There's Eric Music. We can search those in the customer tab too. So we can say we want the open invoices. There's Eric Music. If I go into that one, we can see there that we have the invoice and these this is what's nice here that that billable thing says it's been converted so that's what that link does quite nicely so it's okay it's been converted here's the invoice number you see the connection if i view and edit it you get a little bit more detail that's great the problem is that when you do that with with inventory is that is that issue that it doesn't pull over the proper the proper amount that you have to change but I really like that it's connected here. All that works good. I would think that the, that they could change that, that they could, they could fix that because I, again, the desktop version does it cor correctly and we're using items. So you would think, and it actually takes it to the right income account. So I don't see why they can't make it so it picks up the income line and not the expense line like the desktop version does. Uh, but that's where it is. That's where we're at at this point. You know, stop changing stuff like I don't I hate to be critical, but stop trying to change the names on the left hand side to sales instead of customers and then to get paid instead of sales and and then the business view versus and, and fix that thing. Developer team, that's my and work on the chart of accounts too. OK, that's my little rant. All right, let's do the other one. So we, again, we can look at this. I can go into the sales area over here and I can say, let me let me check this out by the unbilled items again. So here's the unbilled item. This one's for music stuff store. So I can also see that if I went into my customers over here and I see the unbilled item here. So that's another way we can sort for it. And that's really neat. That's great. I love that. You can also run a report for it, but you don't really need to because it's internal. So there it is. Love it. Then... Uh, so let's just remember what happened then on the vendor side. This is uh, Gibson. So we're going to go in and say, okay, this is going to be in here. And we're going to say that if we go into Gibson, we had a purchase order. So we made a purchase order. If I go into the purchase order, then we've got music stuff store that we assigned it to. So we knew who we were purchasing these ones to. That this one, another one came in. The other guy, Eric Music told uh, this customer, Music Stuff Store, about this cool plaid pink guitar, but they wanted to see if he can get it in a Gibson. And it's like, okay, now you guys are making us look weird. All of our vendors think that we're that we're weird because we order these weird colored guitars. But whatever, if that's what the people want, then then we'll do that. So then we we got the inventory and the check. So we went into the check. And then there it is. And so down here, we said that guitar, we made it billable again. So even if I did, so the system would be, do you not want to do that? You don't check it off. You don't make it billable, but you just turn around and make an invoice for that guitar matching this out. That might be one way to go. Or you make it billable, which has that cool link to it, but it's going to pull it in at cost right now until QuickBooks listens to me.
Nobody listens to Turtle. Anyways, whatever. So, so you could do it. So we're just going to show you what that does here. So then we're going to say, let's close this out and then say, let's go back to the sales side this time. And we're going to go into the customers. And this was, uh, I, now I forgot who we were dealing with again. This was music stuff store, right? Or I could search up here by the unbilled item. And then we can go in here and then we can say, there it is. And now I can create an invoice directly. That's what I wanted. To, that's why I wanted to do this. So I'm going to create an invoice from it directly. Super cool. So it pulls that in and that's great. Suggested we found one or more transactions linked to da, da. Okay. So I'm going to say filter transactions. No. So it pulled it in. There's no way I can change to get the proper, to get it to do it right. But there it is. So music stuff store. Let's say this happens on the 24th on the invoice. And this keeps on popping up. So I turned you off before for a reason. Okay. So there it is. But it pulled it in, I think, at the cost. So let's check out what they really cost. G, that's the sale. That's the cost. This is the this is the sales price we need here. So the sales price is 777. So the link, everything is great, but I just need to change that to 777. And there it is. And then I'm going to remove the second one. So remove this one. And then that should work. So it, that works for a workaround, but it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit risky. All right. So then we can just say, I want to do, I want to change the sales tax to the, to the generic five. For our practice problem purposes, you can do it manually. If you need to do it manually, you just have to give a reason to QuickBooks and you just tell, you just tell them, I do what I want to do here. This is my business. This is my thing. Don't, I don't need to tell you why. Okay. Okay. So then let's, so what's this going to do? It's an invoice. That means it's going to increase the accounts receivable by the 8,158.50. The other side's going to go to revenue or sales for the 700, 770 sales tax. The payable is going to go up by the difference of the 388.50. Uh, and then the caught the uh, caught inventory is going to go down by the amount that was the rate before the cost, right? And, and the cost of goods sold, the expense account is going to go up by that amount, the net impact on net income being the sales 7770 minus the cost of goods sold and the accounts receivable is going to have the sub ledger, which will be by customer music stuff store and the inventory will have a sub ledger that will be impacted uh, on the account of inventory as well. So let's say if we can, uh, let's say if we can save and close it, save and close. Okay, so we did it. We did it. Let's go to the balance sheet and check it out. And uh, if we go into the AR, AR, R, the pirate account. So we should have, I have pirates over here. They should work in the AR instead of doing what they're doing. They're, be a pirate, a useful pirate for crying out loud. Any case, there's the eight, there's the 815850. And uh, so that's for the full amount. If I go back on over and then we go to the profit and loss and run that one, we're going to go into the sales. And so we see uh, this one's another invoice. Boom for the 7770. That's the sales price, not including the sales tax. Back on over to the balance sheet. We know that the difference is going to go into this uh, sales tax payable account and the inventory is going to go down inventories up top because we're using a perpetual inventory system here because we're high tech and sophisticated. Not that you not that I'm looking down. You don't have to use the perpetual, but we're going to this is de decreasing here. And then we're going back on over to the profit and loss cost of goods sold. That's the other side. So that's the expense of us consuming the inventory to generate revenue in the same period that we generated the revenue, the impact on net income revenue minus the cost of goods sold is the impact on net income. If I go back to the balance sheet, looking at the A to the R, going to the sub ledger, breaking it out by customer, A to the R, run it, is broken out by customer. And so, so, so see if the, the pirates can work in AR and they can, instead of stealing stuff, they could, they could actually try to collect 
legitimate debts on accounts receivable and they can turn their piracy into good so in any case that's my that's what i feel like but this is at 46 830 that ties into the balance sheet 46 830 and then we have uh the inventory has a sub ledger breaking out by unit so if we look at the sub ledger for inventory and we run it we have a negative inventory so that's kind of messed up because i didn't you know we kind of messed that up to get a negative one there but you shouldn't have negative inventory something went wrong but that's okay we're got nine six nine eight just want to point that out in case someone point because if i don't someone will point it out for us and so i i just want to recognize i'm going to beat people to the punch let's go back to the first tab over here and just uh if i go back to my all sales area Note that if I search by the unbilled items, we don't have any anymore because we've now processed them. If I look at the invoices, we now have our open invoices. So if I go into open invoices, so we've got these, this all invoices, open invoices. So we have our open invoices. If I go into my invoices here, once again, we can search by the unpaid invoices and we see our unpaid invoices that we have created. And then if I go into the customers, we no longer have any unbilled income because we have billed them for it. And we can now have, we now have the bills out. We haven't received payment on it. We have four open invoices. So let's check those out. And then our open invoices are within here. And we just worked on the music stuff store. And if I go into that, once again, I really like the billable item here that's been converted. It's linked up. If I click on it, it shows that it's, it's connected to that invoice that's great and then and then i have the invoice uh within here and if i look at the invoice i can track the invoice information here obviously everything works great only problem is it's not using this i've talked about it maybe you know what the problem is it's not pulling in the sales price for the invoice Fi fix that somebody if somebody if somebody out there's hearing me i just it's like just talking into the ether like i'm at no one but whatever no one listens i feel like they could fix that and that would be the best thing they could do i'm going to go back to the to the i need to be running things over at the intuit people at the intuit place things would be much okay maybe that's not true i don't know but it, well here's the trial balance this is where we stand at this point in time so if your numbers tie out to these numbers great if not, try changing the date range. It might be a date issue. Increase the date if your numbers change. Drill down to the source document. Change the date range. Uh, then I, we'll, we will do a, a whole date range report, transaction detail by date, which might help after the month of data input. But we got the balance sheet on top of the income statement. Remember, checking account, asset. Accounts receivable, asset. Inventory, asset. Investment, asset. Payments to deposit, asset. Accumulated depreciation, contra asset. The funny asset. The one that's an outlier, the strange one, the other. Look at that weird asset over there. It's your credit, weirdo. And then, <laughs> that's not nice. Don't be rude to the to the other, to the outlier over there. In any case, then you've got who this the assets represent who, what the company has, and then the liabilities and equity represent who has claim to it. Just two sides of the same coin. So who has claim to those assets? The accounts payable the vendors that you bought stuff, the, the, the visa, the credit card company, the institution, the government wants a piece, right? The loan, the loan, the loan payable current portion uh, liability for the loan you took out. And then who your claim, your part of the business that you have claimed to your own uh, business assets, owner investment, the owner's equity, this is the equity section, and the whole income statement is part of equity, which we, re we recall we can scrunch down to one number, 46877 plus the 5180 minus the 37242 net income now at the 14815, which ties out to what's on the balance sheet, 14815. And if I was to bring this up to the next period, it would be the 14815 plus what's in owner's equity 77896 and we would just have the balance sheet accounts 010125 to 123125 just to recognize so there it is 92711 nothing would be on the income statement next year because 
QuickBooks rolls it in, doing the closing process for it, not on a monthly basis, though. It only does it on like a yearly basis, something to keep in mind.